Hello, Mr. Eyenga, and welcome to Bulgaria. We welcome you with uh, some protests these days, but as you're coming from Brussels, I'm sure it's, it's not a problem for you. You are used to it. Uh, as Alex told, uh, told to the audience, uh, you are managing the European Innovation Partnership for Agricultural Sustainability and Productivity. And can you tell us a little bit more what exactly is it? We call it EPIAGRI here, but for I am sure for most of the people it sounds a little bit futuristic. So maybe you can make it simpler. Uh, the EIPIAGRI is a European Innovation Partnership for Agricultural Productivity and Sustainability. As it is very long, we shorten it in uh, EIPIAGRI. In fact, it is a policy instrument that was uh, set up in 2010 by the European Commission. Uh, with the goal of fostering innovation in agriculture, forestry, and now extended to rural areas. Uh, this initiative is, uh, in fact, implemented through two existing policies. So you have the common agricultural policy, but also the research and innovation uh, policy program. So those are the two main uh, implementing of, um, programs. In addition to this, uh, the EIP Agri support facility was set up in the frame of European CAP networks. And the EIP Agri support facility for innovation knowledge exchange, including EIP and so on, is very long again, uh, is the external unit that is supporting the Commission in fostering and uh, facilitating innovation exchange, but also connecting innovation actors across Europe. This is the one I'm running and that is based in Brussels under the coordination and the responsibility of uh, DJ Agri. Yes, so you work very close to the, with the Commission and supporting yes. them in this innovation. I'm working for the Commission, for but the I'm, commission. I'm working for the Commission, but I'm not the Commission. Yes. Well, okay. And uh, because we're here to, to talk about uh, renewable energy sources, uh, have you already um, identified some good practices uh, for using uh, renewable energy in agricultural holdings? And uh, do you see already uh, the real um, results yeah. of, of this usage? Uh, I think uh, when we're talking about renewable energy at uh, farm level, we should uh, consider a bit uh, the type of farm or agriculture we're speaking about, because all the farms, they have specific needs. Huh? So it is not one solution fitting all of this. Uh, for that, you have two types that are proved to be quite uh, useful. You have the bioenergy that is uh, been uh, quite uh, famous, using the biomass uh, or waste or waste or residues from agricultural uh, products. And then you have the second category now that is also quite uh, promising and very well, well used. Those are the photovoltaics, so what we call uh, agri-photovoltaics, yeah. that are also used uh, for producing and helping farms to be self-sufficient regarding the energy. And there is a third category, but that one is quite a bit uh, controversial. It is uh, the, the wind molds and so on, but uh, it is a bit complicated. And uh, also regarding the environment, there are a lot of critics on that one. But normally what I would say is that you have two main types. So the biomass and bioenergy, and then the photovoltaics uh, in general. Yeah. That are the two main ones. Actually, in Bulgaria, the, the topic with the photovoltaics is very up to date and uh, they are uh, very much supported under the rural development uh, program measures and now under also uh, the National Recovery and Resilience Plan. plan. So many farmers are uh, uh, heading towards uh, this type of uh, solar panels and photovoltaic energy. Uh, but there are some restrictions actually. They are um, uh, they are not allowed to sell this energy here in Bulgaria. Uh, but talking about this type of, uh, of solutions uh, under EAP Agri and the projects, the operational groups running there, have you already noticed some good practices, some interesting projects, something not just put to put some solar panels, but something more than that, some in, something innovative? Indeed, indeed, using agri photovoltaics is not innovative at all. Huh? In fact, uh, you can use, uh, you can put solar panel uh, everywhere. Yeah. You, the usual practice now is uh, installing them on the roof mm -hmm. of uh, most of uh, structures at farm. But what is promising as uh, innovation now? What we see, I'll here mention uh, one uh, project. It is the Hyper Farm. So people can check later on. 
that is hydrogen and uh, hydrogen and uh, electrification uh, at farm level. In fact, what is quite innovative now is to combine solar panels, the AGD photovoltaics, with some other possibilities. Mm -hmm. For instance, combining a solar panel with a hydrogen panel, you see, so that you do produce energy, but at the same time, regarding the hydrogen panel, they are there to produce hydrogen gas. You see, those are the panels that you add them on the solar panel, mm -hmm. and then you have at the same time the production of uh, energy, but also the production of the gas. And in fact, what is happening? Uh, it is quite difficult to use the agricultural arm. So the main innovation now is that they are using the open space, what we call now open space uh, for, uh, photovoltaics. They are building uh, structures, tall structures that are very high so that the machine, the, ma the machine can still work around. And then that one, and from there, they are collecting energies. So it has no impact on the surface. You can still use the surface to cultivate whatever you want, but at the same time, it is being used to produce also energy and so on. This is one example where they are combining those two things. And then you have another, but this is a, for those who like to have more information, it is in Belgium. It is University of, uh, Catholic University of Leuven that is testing that uh, solution and also see how it could be efficiently uh, implemented. And then you have another, another example that is in Germany. In Germany, but then it is a bit different here because there the purpose would be to put the farmer at the center of the system because they would be using those land, those land with those high uh, panels. But there they are combining the panels with uh, biochar application. So it's a bit something that is quite uh, new and is also helping for the decarbonization of, uh, the, of this. And there you can connect, what is the test that they are doing now is to connect this with the local energy system. So the farmer will have now a bigger role in producing uh, food, but also energy for the whole community. This is where the innovation is now. As I was saying, just installing solar panel is no more yeah. It's not innovative. It sounds more cost effective, actually, even without the subsidies and the, yeah. Yeah, just to fit the market. <laughs> no, this is, so this is the direction where people they should do combining, combining both. Huh? And also for each farm, the solution for some of them, the bioenergy will still be the best option. Mm -hmm. For the other ones, they may use that, uh, those new systems. But it's just to say you, you need to assess the farm and see what are the real needs of that farm instead of just taking things and install there. Yeah, okay. And what about the precision farming? Is it more uh, energy effective or on the contrary, wants, uh, needs more, more energy, uh, a bigger energy input in, in it? No, I, think that, I think that we cannot oppose both huh? because as I was mentioning now, in the same uh, test farm, it is Transfarm, huh? the name of the farm in the Catholic level. They are also installing sensors on those uh, solar panels. They, they are even other system for greenhouse, mm -hmm. for greenhouse uh, production, where they are also using uh, those uh, agrovoltaics agro with sensors to improve the irrigation system, for instance, you see, is improving the irrigation system, but also you have the drones and the automatized uh, system where you also use that energy. I will not say that uh, precision farming is consuming too much energy, but it is good because it's also helping to run uh, a farm on a better and efficient way, you see. So we cannot oppose both things, but both things are very much complementary. And this is a bit the future, as I was saying. This is a bit the innovation where the things should go. So to close this conversation, what do you think? Is it uh, obligatory on this stage to, to use the renewable energy in the agricultural holdings? I will not say it is obligatory, but I will the suggest... Point yes, point. at the market point, I will suggest... Uh, because you see, I'm working for farmers, eh? as I said. Eh? Regarding farmers, I will say it is better for them to try to produce their own energy and be self-sufficient and not depending to external factors. And for that, there are a lot of possibilities at farm level. And once again, it's a question of assessing and looking at what they can do themselves. You see, because if you do externalize everything, then it's been more expensive because the input 
is getting higher than the output, and then it's not it's beneficial not. for farmers. So, so using renewable energy, I would say yes, but they should assess their capacity and their needs. The best way, and not yeah, to be led by the subsidies, maybe <laughs> just to see how. They, this is what I'm saying that they should look. They should look at their own. You see, in fact, this is a question of economy. Yeah? You see, if you do, if your business model is oriented uh, towards the ex external factor, you will always be at the risk of uh, not uh, solving your own problem. So you should be first making sure that you have the control of the most important factor in your production system. And then you see what you can take from outside. Because if you take everything from outside, it is the same, eh, including the subsidies. The subsidies are just there to help, yeah. but they cannot last forever. You see, so, and just to conclude, I would say a farm is an enterprise. It is a business. You see, you should run it as a business with a vision. It is a, a what I can say at this stage for that. Thank you very much for this. And You're welcome. I think it was uh, very interesting for our audience. So thank, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm thank you. happy to come here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.